Have you ever wondered what all there is to see and do on a Disney cruise? We're on the Disney Fantasy for a full tour of the rooms, decks, pools, and more. And we're gonna talk about its sister ship, the Disney Dream 2. Let's go check it out. The Disney Fantasy is a 130,000 ton ship, one of the five Disney ships currently sailing. It is designed with longer retreats in mind, and at the time of filming, it sails three, four, five, six, seven, and ten night Caribbean and Bahamian cruises out of Port Canaveral. Current destinations that the Disney Fantasy sails to include the Bahamas, Disney Lookout K at Lighthouse Point, Disney Castaway Key, Mexico, Grand Cayman, Jamaica, the British and U.S. Virgin Islands, St. Martin, where we are today, Puerto Rico, Antigua, St. Lucia, and Dominica. We are going to do a full tour of the ship so that if you are headed on the Disney Fantasy, you know what to expect. And if you're thinking about heading on the Disney Fantasy, you know what to take a look at. And maybe if you are planning to do either of those things, this will help with some of that FOMO. Okay, we are starting our ship tour here in the Grand Atrium. These doors actually are where you'll enter the ship for the first time. When you walk in, they do call out your name to announce your arrival. It's a very magical moment. And you get to emerge right into this beautiful grand space. Uh, we are on a Halloween on the high seas cruise. So there are themed cruises. There's Pixar Day at Seas cruises, Marvel Day at Sea cruises, uh, very merry time cruises for Christmas. And this is the Halloween on the high seas cruise. So we've got a ton of Halloween decorations here as well as the Halloween tree and tons of Halloween activities around the ship as well. Now you can really get a sense of the theme of the fantasy when you're in the atrium. This ship, of course, focused on fantastical, magical stories but it's got a beautiful Art Nouveau inspiration. And the atrium itself is actually inspired by like peacock feathers. So it's very, very pretty. Um, my favorite part of the atrium are these little like wrap around gold uh, pieces around the different stories where you can see a bunch of Disney characters like Max golfing with his dad or Daisy reading a book. They are all on vacation. Um, this is the Halloween tree, which is part of the Halloween on the high seas decorations. And they actually did have a very cool uh, Halloween tree show that we were able to see on the first day where they awakened the Halloween tree for Halloween. The atrium is going to be kind of a one-stop shop for a lot of activities. It's one of the biggest gathering areas on the inside of the cruise ship. So a lot of times you'll see character meet and greets here on this first floor, um, on the staircase or in front of the staircase. There's often meet and greets on the balcony here. And some characters were just sort of roaming around this area last night as well. Like Rapunzel was just walking around. Off to the side of the atrium over here and on the other side, there are some scenic photo backgrounds. And in the Disney Cruise Line Navigator app, you can actually see when there will be photographers here to take themed photos at these backgrounds. Speaking of the Disney Cruise Line Navigator app, it is a major part of any Disney cruise. Now, if you cruised like 10 years ago, you probably got a paper navigator at your door when you woke up in the morning that told you all of the day's activities. That's not really the case anymore. Now it's all on your TV screen or on an app. So we have the app here, the Disney Cruise Line app. Uh, basically, you can use this even before your cruise to book like things for your room or port excursions and things like that. But once you're on your cruise, once you connect to the ship's Wi-Fi, that's when things really get good and you can start seeing the navigator for your full trip. Uh, the Explore tab has all of the daily activities that you can do and you can heart them if there's something you might be interested in doing and you'll get a notification when that's coming up so you don't miss it. Has the location of everything, different character meet and greets, has all the hours and menus for all the dining options. Um, and there's on this My Plans tab, it's everything that you've hearted as well as your dinner time or the show for the day and things like that. There's also a couple other things you can do in the app, like check out your folio, any charges you make to the room so far. You can connect to the Wi-Fi, which does cost money outside of like the basic navigator Wi-Fi. Um, there's like, you can get 10% off of future cruises if you book while you're on board. Um, and pretty much everything you need to know is in the app. There's even a chat feature where you're automatically linked to other people in your stateroom and you can message them on board without being attached to Wi-Fi um, or connected to any cellular service, which is really helpful because obviously you're in the middle of the ocean. So Cassie and I have been messaging each other. We've gotten some like guest services messages. This is a really helpful way to like stay in the know and stay connected to the people you're on the cruise with. Now a big piece of the atrium is going to be the signature statue. You will find one on every single Disney cruise ship and with that Art Nouveau inspirations on the fantasy, we do have Minnie in a beautiful formal outfit. And last night for formal night, Minnie was even in this actual outfit when she was meeting guests in here. So it's a very cute statue um, and it's definitely something worth taking a photo with when you're on your cruise for the memories. 
Also, this uh, stair here kind of counts as a stage as well, so occasionally there will be performances. Uh, Cassie and I are really big fans of a violinist that we saw on The Dream and now on The Fantasy. His name is Jordan Caswell, and he was performing up here last night. They've got live music a lot of the time. There's a full grand piano here too. And then off to the sides of the atrium, there are some nice seating areas, plenty of seating areas around the ship in general. So that's the first place to enter into. There's a lot more. We are here on deck three, but before we continue up here, we're gonna head down to deck one and start from the bottom, work our way all the way to the top so you know everything there is to see on your ship. We are down on the very, very bottom of the ship on deck one. Uh, deck one, not a lot going on here, but it is a very, very important deck for two reasons. One, deck one is the home of the health center. Um, the health center is where you're gonna go if you're not feeling well, even if you're seasick or anything like that, you can swing by the health center and they will be happy to help you. If hopefully this doesn't happen, but you have any sort of emergency health situation, this is also where you're gonna go and they will do their best to get you all the care you need. Um, just FYI, if they uh, can't take care of you in the health center um, and it's a big emergency, the ship will pull over and get you to a hospital. That literally happened last night. Um, unfortunately, a crew member did have a medical emergency and in the middle of the night, we swung by Turks and Caicos to get, drop them off on land where they can get the help that they need. Um, but health center here, ever important. If you're feeling sick, health center, health center, health center, deck one right here. Otherwise, though you can't see them right now, the tender lobbies are going to be down here on deck one as well. Those are going to be the uh, areas where you are going to board land when you get to port. So, of course, the ports you visit is going to vary based on your cruise, but if you do head to port, you're going to head all the way down to deck one. There are a couple of different tender lobbies, and that's how you are going to get off the ship and come back on the ship. It's why you go through all the security. You have to go through security when leaving and returning to the ship. You're going to need that key to the world card, so make sure you have it, um, but that's going to be down here in these tender lobbies. Embarkation. Um, this is all the guest accessible areas on deck one, just the health center and the embarkation areas. Um, so there's not a whole lot going on down here. But let's just talk about navigating a ship in general. So when you're on a cruise ship, you're gonna have the aft, which is the back, the forward, which is the front, and the midship. There's the starboard side and the port side as well. Um, and you'll see some signs pointing those directions. But you can see that most of the guest areas start around deck three and go all the way up to deck 14. So we're going to check out all of those today. Um, right now the health center is in the very forward of the ship, but this is a very easy map to read. It's always in the direction that you were standing. So that way is forward and that way is backward. Um, and you can just kind of check out these maps whenever you're lost. I get lost a lot on cruise ships. It's a little bit difficult to navigate, um, but I'm starting to get the hang of it. So don't you worry. We're going to figure all this out together. So elevators and stairs are how you're going to get up and down just like everywhere else. Um, but there's a couple things to know about those things. So uh, for the elevators, cruise elevators are relatively small. They are on the small side. They are also on the slower side. They're not as fast as some elevators you might be used to. You can wait a while. So we'll see how long it takes for us to get an elevator. It's not a super crowded time for elevators, um, but we'll just see, because we got to head up. There's stairs also. Um, they're pretty wide stairs, easy to climb, but if you have mobility issues or if you're going up like 10 floors, the stairs aren't always great. So just make sure to build in time when you're trying to get around for the elevators as they can take a while to get around, especially if it's around dinner time or around show time. But the elevators are very cute. The Art Nouveau theme. I lost Cassie, um, but uh, now we're on deck two. It's just that easy. I found Cassie. Now we are on deck two. Now something to keep in mind is that every single thing we're seeing today is gonna to be exactly the same on the sister ship, the Disney Dream. So just keep that in mind as we look around. The Disney Dream is gonna have exactly the same stuff. I will note when something's a little bit different, but more or less everything's gonna be the same. We made it to deck two. I we found Cassie. Deck two. So we are on the lowest of the guest room hallways. We are on deck two. Deck two has ocean view rooms, uh, not veranda rooms, just ocean view. So they have a porthole out and they have interior rooms that have a virtual porthole. A lot of the guest floors have laundrettes. You can see these on the map, and they're just these cute little laundry rooms for if you need to do any laundry during your stay, you got access to them. Now keep in mind, uh, there's a little bit of a fee for doing laundry, but um, you know, worth it if your clothes are gross, I guess. You also need an accessible um, laundrette. It's on deck five. Deck five, accessible laundrette. Um, we're gonna take this little side hallway down because there's actually more than just guest rooms on deck two. 
All right, we've made our way through this little secret passage um, into the remainder of deck two. So deck two is not very large, but there is a very important thing down here, and that is Enchanted Garden. Enchanted Garden is one of the three rotational dining restaurants here on the Disney Fantasy. Rotational dining is something that you will have on the Disney cruise ship, where each night you will rotate through one of the rotational dining restaurants. Your serving team will follow you, so you'll have the same server every night, and you get to have a wonderful sit-down meal at one of these restaurants. Enchanted Garden here is themed to what it sounds like, an enchanted garden. It's got a very beautiful beautiful open air space and in the morning if you were to come here for breakfast you would see it has kind of like a daytime lighting where at night it becomes a magical kind of nighttime lighting but Enchanted Garden is a very beautiful restaurant and they do have the sea bass here sea bass is a famous Disney Cruise Line uh, eat and they do have it at Enchanted Garden so this is where you're gonna want to get that sea bass if you're a fish eater also you'll find Vista Gallery down here now Vista Gallery is a place where you can check out beautiful Disney art um, and even purchase it if any of it catches your eye so that's pretty cool. There are also two locations, one of which is here on deck two, for the Midship Detective Agency, which is where you can become a detective. All right, we got our detective booklet, so we might try to solve the mystery as we explore the ship. Um, the Muppets are missing all their props. They've all gotten stolen. So we have to... I know. What? I know. So we There's have to find out. On Disney Cruise? Yeah. But basically, you get, this, uh, you get this detective badge, and when you show the magic paintings, this side of the badge, uh, it knows what, you're, what part of the mystery you're on. So we are going to uh, try to hunt down, we're headed to the scene of the crime, basically, but we're gonna see more of the ship as we do so. All right, as you can probably tell, we've made it up to deck three, where there are some very fun character meet and greets happening. Uh, Goofy's coming out soon, so there's a line for him started. Uh, the Sanderson sisters are upstairs. This is an exclusive meet and greet that you can only find Oh wait, Goofy's over there. Always oh, there's a skeleton. Uh, but the Sanderson sisters are up there. It is Minnie dressed as Winnie, uh, Daisy as Sarah, and Clarabelle as Mary. This is a meet and greet that you can only do here on Disney Cruise Line. Uh, they are visible elsewhere at Disney properties, but they are not um, meetable, meet and greetable. But we've seen the atrium, so let's see more of Deck 3. This is a big one. So right here off the atrium, we have Bon Voyage. This is gonna be your lobby bar. So a lounge where you can grab beer, wine, cocktails, whatever you might want. They do have their own specialty menu and they have this wonderful, very royal feeling seating uh, that even has these portraits of castles next to it. Here is that menu. So plenty of options, including creative teas, which are tea cocktails, which is pretty cool. And my favorite thing about these ships is that there are Cinderella mosaics that you can find. I absolutely love the Cinderella mosaics in Magic Kingdom. They're one of my favorite things in all of Disney World and I love it. There's a little taste of them here. Plus thrones you can sit in because who doesn't want that? Continuing to the forward part of the ship, we get into the shopping area. So here we have Mickey's Mainsail. Uh, Mickey's Mainsail is going to be the uh, one of the larger merchandise locations on the ship that has more of your classic Disney merchandise selections, including some Disney Cruise Line exclusives like this very cute Disney Cruise Line play set. Uh, but this is a great spot to look for souvenirs and also any necessities you might need. They do have some anti-nausea, some Dramamine if you're feeling that seasickness, um, as well as sunscreen and things like that. Ornaments, if you want to grab an ornament as your souvenir. Just a ton of really cute, that's a really cute um, Disney Cruise Line shirt. Lots of Disney Cruise Line merchandise. There's ears. And of course, because we are on Halloween on the high seas, there is some Halloween specific merch and even some Halloween on the high seas specific merchandise. So stuff that you can't find anywhere else, but if you're on a Halloween on the high seas cruise. Also, if you did not pack well enough for pirate night, this is a great place to stop because they do have some piratey props, some piratey hats and, and outfits that you can grab so that you're all prepared for pirate night. We've also got Sea Treasures over here. Now Sea Treasures is going to be uh, a little bit more like of the curated collection. So we have the Disney's Cruise Line Silver Anniversary available here for that 25 year anniversary they are celebrating. Um, a very cute collection. And then there's some like vacation wear and stuff. Some Disney Cruise Line branded, some a little more subtly branded or not branded um, so that you can kind of grab a souvenir but a lot more cruise wear and bags they've got golden mickeys i love that they do not currently have the golden mickey show on the ship but the golden mickeys is an original disney cruise line sh broadway style show that is very fun it's kind of a variety show with a lot of different disney characters i absolutely love seeing it um unfortunately it's not on the ship but there are some other amazing entertainment options on the ship speaking of entertainment will take place at the walt disney theater the Walt Disney Theater is the largest theater on the ship, and it is where you'll find those Broadway-style productions. There is a Walt Disney Theater on every single Disney cruise ship, 
and the Broadway productions do vary depending on what ceiling you're on. For us, we will be seeing Aladdin, a musical spectacular, as well as Frozen, and they have Disney Believe, which is a Disney Cruise Line original that we have seen on The Wish and is a total tearjerker. Now, unfortunately, we cannot film those shows, but this is the theater. It's pretty large. There's actually um, a level above us as well of more seats, um, and the shows are amazing. Absolutely a must-do when you're on your Disney Cruise. Uh, but it's not always Broadway style shows in there. In fact, tonight, instead of a Broadway style show, they are showing the 2023 Haunted Mansion in here, which is very fitting because today is also the day we are celebrating Halloween on the ship, as you might be able to tell from the costumes. Just outside of Walt Disney Theater, there are a couple locations of preludes, which is the theater bar. You can't have drinks and like popcorn and eats in the theater. So they have popcorn for sale, popcorn buckets, as well as sippers. You can grab your beers, your wine, whatever you might want for watching the show. That's not quite all the merchandise. We also have Diamonds and Wishes. Diamonds and Wishes is where you're going to find a bit of that higher-end merchandise. So I'm talking Pandora, Bretling, Hublot, Omega, not Breitling, sorry, um, Swarovski. Really, really beautiful designer collections in here. Expensive, but tax-free. So it's something to keep in mind when shopping on a cruise ship. There's even the exclusive Crown of Light collection, which is developed uh, to be sold here on Disney Cruise Line. It has those beautiful, very sparkly diamonds in it. Um, there's been a lot of like shopping showcases to talk about the options in here and uh, they've even had a few raffles and giveaways and things like that so you can get perfume and then just next door we have Bulgari which is another of those higher end shops with um, beautiful jewelry that you can shop for it's great for gifts and again tax free which is really nice compared to land where of course there are taxes that brings us back around towards the atrium uh, before we head back into the now very busy atrium space we do have guest services here guest services open 24 7. this is going to operate kind of like your front desk at a hotel if there's anything you need you can let them know um, and they'll be happy to help you we on the first day had a bag that didn't make it to our room they had it here at guest services we just had to come down and ask them about it so um obviously a major amenity and if you have any questions guest services is there to help you in the back of the atrium we have royal court uh, royal court is another of those rotational dining locations this one is kind of the fanciest it is inspired by dining in a princess's castle and there are lots of touches of the princesses in here uh, the menu is a little bit up, more upscale. There's escargot and duck comfy. We had a really amazing meal here on our first night. We, of course, will have another meal here with the rotational dining. But it's a, it's a really nice restaurant. It's actually probably my least favorite of the three. But it's really hard because they're all a really nice evening. Royal Court is also going to be one of our differences over on the Disney Dream. Royal Court, an incredibly similar restaurant, just called Royal Palace. In fact, they even have pretty much the same menu. So very, very similar restaurants. And back here in the very back of deck three is where we'll find our final rotational dining restaurant. This is Animator's Palette. Now, Animator's Palette is my favorite of the three rotational dining spots. It's going to have um, a really fun menu that has Californian as well as more worldly inspiration. So I have noticed that a lot of the dishes have a bit of an Asian flair. And then on top of that, this one has the most interactive show of the three restaurants. It is a show where you can interact with Crush the Turtle. They have this on the Dream as well, but Crush will literally swim around the restaurant and come and talk to your table. There's also games with Dory and Marlin. Um, I really like this restaurant because I think the food is the best, but in general, it's the most interactive, the most Disney of the restaurants. Now, one thing I will note about Animator's Palette is that my favorite Animator's Palette show is actually the one that they have on the Disney Wonder and Disney Magic. The Animator's Palette on those ships have a show that take you through the history of um, Disney animation and kind of show you the process of animation from start to finish. It is very, very, very cute. Um, and I often find myself wishing that was the show on the dream and the fantasy. Uh, so I like the crush show. I just think that one is a little bit better. So if you're that dedicated to dining, maybe it has an effect on your ship choice, then that's something to consider. The Wish also does not have animator's palette, but The Wish has more interactive dining in general as both Worlds of Marvel is very interactive and the Frozen restaurant is very interactive. And with that, we are on deck four where we have made it to Europa. Now Europa is a very interesting section of the ship. By day, this is gonna be where you'll find a lot of those beverage seminars, some family activities, maybe arts and crafts or trivia. By night, Europa becomes an 18 and up only area um, with some of the most amazing lounges that you'll find on the whole ship. So Europa is absolutely fantastic. Now this is very different on the Disney Dream. The adults only area is themed to the district. That's kind of like a city theme. Whereas Europa, the different lounges are themed to different cities in Europe. It is 
so much fun. It feels like kind of like being a little kid when you get to wander around a play city or something like that. Um, so lots of really amazing bars that we can t take a look at. So Skyline Lounge is on both the Dream and the Fantasy and it is a really, really fun classic cruise concept where it feels like you're going to a bunch of different cities as you sit in the lounge. So the walls will change, even the drink specials menu will change as the lounge changes from city to city as you travel around. Across the way at the very back of the ship, we have the largest kind of like grown-up gathering space. This is where that adults-only karaoke, the adults-only game shows, they all take place back here in the tube. The tube here is the sort of London-themed restaurant. Very funny right now, there is a silent disco happening. So I don't have headphones on and this is very, very funny. But uh, this is the tube. It is a London underground themed uh, bar which is really cool because I was in London literally uh, like a week and a half ago so I spent a lot of time on the London underground and I love this you've got the ticket seats and it looks like the like the subway tile they've even got the little like handholds which I actually don't even think they have on the actual London underground but the tube is where you're gonna find a lot of dance parties we came into trivia in here crazy karaoke was in here last night so it's definitely very fun and then of course Tonight, there is the adults only Halloween party in here. It is the very back of the ship. Uh, so just a warning that it does have a little bit more movement than other places on the ship. And I have noticed myself getting a little queasy in here, um, but that's an easy fix because we can just step right outside. So deck four is the first of the decks where you can actually step outside. We have the jogging path out here. It is a track that in 2.5 laps will take you a mile. But in general, I absolutely love these promenades on the side of the ship. I'm not gonna jog on my vacation. That's just not who I am, but the promenades, uh, some of them have shuffleboard and they are a really great place to grab those seaside views with a lot less activity than the upper pool decks that we're gonna check out later. So for instance, there's these really nice cushioned loungers that you can find just on this side of the ship and just come hang out up here under the lifeboats and take a look out at the ocean. So it's just a really nice promenade and a great place to step out if Europa makes you a little seasick. Came back in because it was a little windy and loud, but the jogging path is really really a great option for getting some movement while you're on the cruise. Even if you're not gonna jog, if you just wanna take a walk, cruise ships can feel very combined. So it can be really nice to be able to go for a little bit of a walk around the entire perimeter of the ship. Now, though the Fantasy does have Skyline, the tube on the Fantasy is called Evolution and has a butterfly theme with that city theme they've got going on. We're gonna wander through these kind of weird hallways and find our way to kind of this open space that feels like you're like in the streets which I love. Now this like Parisian cafe vibe is a hint at the bar that is right here, which is Ooh La La, the champagne lounge. Uh, it's not quite open for the day yet, but it's a very dim, very moody champagne lounge. Jordan, our favorite violinist, does often play in there. Um, and the vibes are just spectacular, sitting in like a dark corner and having your glass of champagne. So absolutely love Ooh La La. Now in the place of Ooh La La on the Dream, you will find 687 Pub, which is their kind of sports bar. We also have this nice center area, which is La Piazza. It is an Italy themed bar. It has this nice carousel. There's Venetian masks. There's often live entertainment in here as well. And there's these wonderful little booths. Uh, this is District Lounge on the Dream. And our final location is O'Gill's Pub. Now O'Gill's Pub is gonna be the Irish pub on board. Great place to go for a beer or if you have to catch your NFL football while you're on board, um, which I might do a little later. I typically love the pubs on board the ships. I just think the vibe of a pub is really nice. Um, so O'Gill's is my favorite of the bars, but all of them are so much fun and have so much to offer. And with multiple nights on the ship, you might as well experience them all if you like to drink. And even if you don't, they've got non-alcoholic options and mocktails. Now in the location of O'Gills on the Disney Dream is Pink, which is their champagne lounge, which has like a pink bubbles theme. And if you look closely, you'll even see those pink elephants from Dumbo. Um, but I think I could use a little refreshment. Uh, so I'm at Van Gassi and we might ch check out O'Gills. Another thing is that in the evening when this does become an adults only area, this little mini buffet is stocked. So last night I saw like pot stickers. There's just some nice like little bites or if you need something to uh, hold you over for your evening. Okay, we ended up going with La Piazza because Cassie doesn't drink beer, so she's no fun. Hey, you don't know if I don't drink beer. Do you drink beer? I mean, when I have to. Because <laughs> you people. Um, so we ended up getting peach bellinis at La Piazza. They were very delicious, um, super fruity. Honestly, more juice though than they were like alcohol. There was Prosecco in them, but, and it's a lot of Prosecco, but 
it's just like not the most cocktaily cocktail in the world, but very refreshing. They were a sweet drink, but I wouldn't say they were like the sweetest, sweetest drink. Sweetest drink. We yeah. had some pretty sweet drinks on this ship, but they weren't like they weren't overbearing if you're not in sweet drinks. Yeah, I think they were a really great like balanced fruity. They were a big cruise drink, honestly. They feel elevated, mm-hmm. but they're still like super refreshing. The so. presentation was really beautiful, but you are gonna want to mix it a little bit because it definitely comes just like in two separated parts. Yeah. And we heard we heard now this is from the bartender, so they're a little bit biased. We heard that that was where you get the best Bellini yeah. on the ship. But if you order a Bellini anywhere else, it's not as good. I mean, can we trust them? I, don't I know. do. Oh. All right, we are having we are heading from aft forward, so back to front. Um, at this time, we're passing by D Lounge. Now, D Lounge is going to be another of the larger gathering spaces on the ship. This is where bingo takes place. It's where family karaoke takes place. A lot of the family board games, you can see they're all set up for family karaoke. Um, and there's a stage, so it's just really well suited to having those like fun, large group uh, activities. We even came in here and drew Mickey Mouse earlier, which was very fun. And or you can um, spend twenty five dollars to lose and feel like a clown, but have a great time doing it. That's a bingo. We did have a lot of fun. Kind of want to do it again, but that seems silly. Just next to D Lounge is Carriage Jewels. This is another of those more higher end shopping areas. This is where you'll find more of that Crown of Light collection. So just really beautiful jewelry. Um, Diamonds International is kind of the name of the game here. And then we make our way to Shutters, capturing memories. So this is actually just kind of on the edge of the atrium up here, but Shutters is where you will find your photos from your cruise. So there are professional photographers at dinner and around the ship at different photo ops and when you meet characters. And if you tap your band or key to the world card, you can see all your photos from your cruise. <laughs> our dinner pictures and our Donald pictures. He he he. Uh, look at him. Cassie. Hey. It's us and Donald and Walt. Um, but yeah, you can see all your pictures from the cruise in here. You can buy them individually as prints or digital, or you can buy packages. Um, the packages are rather expensive though. So it's something to budget for. Uh, but that said, when you do meet characters, you can give them your phone um, and the cast members will take pictures on your phone as well. So we have these pictures on our phone too, um, which means we don't have to pay for them, which is great. But the professional f- photos are a little bit nicer and they can make for some really nice memories. I like love these ones that have like the cheesy little cruise line frames. Um, this is from our dinner. We look like a married couple. <laughs> I think we are. Me and my wife. Don't well, tell Emma. Yeah, I was about to say, hold on, hold on. Hold on. I'm not trying to get in Emma's way. <laughs> Just daisies. Um, that's- but the uh, the shutters photos are available like during operating hours for this desk here. Um, if you do want to see your photos outside of those operating hours, you can do so online. Um, but of course, that's kind of dependent on your Wi-Fi working. One of my favorite places to take photos on the ship is on the atrium stairs, which is this kind of grand staircase that walks down into the lower atrium. Um, It's just very beautiful. And Cassie and I have talked a lot about how we especially love the design of the fantasy because with that peacock feather inspiration, that main staircase is green marble with blue carpet and it just feels so regal. In fact, the greens are just really beautiful on the ship. Around here, we do have our first cafe. This is Vista Cafe. Cafes on the ship do offer food as well as beverages um, for an additional fee. So it's just something to keep in mind that it's going to be a little extra if you want that specialty coffee. Uh, There is free just like regular drip coffee, but specialty coffees are delicious. You can get Disney characters in the foam if you get a hot drink. And so it just might be the kind of thing where you might want to consider grabbing a specialty coffee instead of something a little more boring. It will cost you a little extra. You might want to consider it. You might want to really, really do it and then really go back and go back and go back and go back until you get your free drink. I don't know. And I don't know where we're at with that. But, um. They do have a little card they will give you where if you buy five of the specialty coffees, you get your next one free. And we've already maybe gotten to a free coffee and we maybe have only been here for two nights. Lots of seating up here as well, all for Vista Cafe. Um, but you don't have to be going to one of the cafes or bars to sit in there seating. You can just let the cast members know that you won't be ordering anything and that's totally fine. This is also where you'll find the port shopping desk. So if you have any questions about shopping at port, this is where you're gonna wanna go. Um, and even if you don't have questions and you just want a little information, they do have these little like port shopping booklets that you can grab so you can learn more about shopping at the destinations that you're headed to. 
And while we're talking info desks, we've also got the Disney Vacation Club desk up here. Disney Vacation Club is Disney's timeshare program. Um, they have locations all over the world, uh, Disney and not. And you can check out uh, more about the Disney Vacation Club. Uh, the information desk is actually now downstairs, so it's actually right over there. By guest services. By guest services below us. But um, you can kind of flip through this book and learn about Disney Vacation Club. They have seminars on board about it. So if you're thinking about joining Disney Vacation Club or you just want to learn more about it, you can go check that out. In fact, the seminar they had today even offered onboard credit applied to your room just for going to the seminar. So it can be very, very worth it to do that because you basically get free money. So just listen to your morning announcements. So that's how I knew about that. One of my favorite things about going on a Disney cruise is that they do do first run Disney movies and the location for that on this ship is going to be here at Buena Vista Theater. This is, there's a movie going on so we're not going to pop in I think, but this is um, a two-story movie theater that feels very grand and fun and as you can see they show relatively new Disney movies pretty much all day um, so you can come and check them out sometimes they'll show more classics but mostly they're gonna show new stuff or stuff that goes with the theme of the ship um, it's just like who doesn't love going to the movies and I love that you can come and see movies that are literally in theaters back on land while you're on your cruise so you don't miss any big releases is a bar for Buena Vista Theater as well. Has a lot of the popcorn, snacks, um, alcoholic beverages, and things like that. Oh my gosh, Muppets Call Board. This will probably be important for our mystery later, but we still haven't made it to the scene of the crime. Also, I know you're, I'm drinking water out of a can. Isn't that weird? In the very back here, we do have the Walt Disney Theater again. This is the balcony seating for Walt Disney Theater. Personally, I prefer sitting downstairs in the Walt Disney Theater because I like to really see the actors' faces, but upstairs can provide you a really beautiful view of the entire production. So there's benefits to both. And on this cruise, there's multiple nights of the different shows. So if you wanted to see the show from a different angle, you could. Look how dapper he is. One of my favorite things about traversing the ship is that on the different floors on the land between the staircases there is art and a lot of times it's concept art for Disney movies or in this case it is prints from very very old Mickey cartoons which is very cute um, there's some absolutely amazing art that I've never seen before all over the ship so uh, definitely worth taking the stairs a few times to see that if you're able all right we've actually come around to the aft end of the ship because we've got some stuff to see back in the back again so we're headed up to deck five we are making our way through the rooms on deck five or past the rooms and we did pass Pepe the King Pond room um which may be relevant in our mystery do you guys think he did it I think it's possible you think he did it yeah see if he's home housekeeping now here we're making our way past Disney's Oceaneers lab which is going to be one of the kids areas for the ship um very fun place that your kiddos can hang out during the day so there are two main kids spaces on the ship, Oceaneers Lab and Oceaneers Club. This is Oceaneers Lab. Um, it is open for an open house right now. And as you can see, there's no kiddos in here, which is a great time for us to check it out um, because we don't like to film the little kiddos. But uh, these are spaces for kids ages three to 12, tons of fun kid activities. They've got a media lounge and this explorer's room that has this little game where you can drive the cruise ship. There's this whole room called the wheelhouse where they're playing cars, but just a really fun, space for kiddos definitely the kind of thing that like I would love to do now as an adult that I can't do um they've got big group activity rooms that are an option too there's this portrait of Mr. Gibbs every kid's favorite Pirates of the Caribbean character they've got special bathrooms that are all kid size a uh, craft studios for kids he talks Mr. Gibbs talks he didn't talk to me oh. better stay off I'm sorry, did you say? <laughs> he yeah. said poop deck. They've got a craft studio, and this is the magic play floor, which is an interactive floor that at different times of day will have different games going on. It's just very cool, very fun. And yes, you can register to leave your kiddos here so that you can have some grown up time without them. Stop oh man. Turn on oh man. Oh boy. I'm already stressed out. Hang on. Okay, okay. Okay, okay, okay. All right, no, 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 no. We got it, we got it, we got it. Oh, yes. I did not get a good enough look at the picture. Oh, you've made like all of Troy. I got, I got Gabriella. I think we got it. <laughs> I think you need to have more, oh no, I did it wrong. So we were doing the open house of Oceaneer's lab, which they have pretty much every day. You can see it in your navigators app where anybody can go in. There's also events in there that are for all ages. 
um, and no one else was in there, so they turned the magic play floor on for us and let us do a high school musical puzzle, and it was the best thing that's ever happened to me. If I was not working for DFB, I think my dream job would be to be one of the Ocean Leaders Club um, cast members. That's so just cute. Because I just walked by and saw them like just doing group dance, and I'm like, I want to do that. You'd be good at group dance. Oceaneers Club, also for 3 to 12, also where your kiddos will have a blast during their stay. They've got Andy's room and a little Star Wars space. So lots of really fun stuff to check out there. But we're going to move on to another space. You'll notice the Oceaneers Club and Lab are for ages 3 to 12, but what about if they're under 3? There is still a place they can get taken care of. So you can bring your little babies, your toddlers on the cruise and still have a great time while they, while they are hopefully having a blast at the It's a Small World Nursery, which is literally open from 9 to 11. So you can get tons of time, grown up time, where your little kid has some fun. Here we have the Port Adventures desk, which when it's open is a great spot to book or if you have questions or any issues with any Port Adventures, you can go by there to discuss them. On the opposite side of the balcony over here is Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique. Yes, this ship does have its very own Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique where little kiddos can get their princess makeovers. And on pirate night, they actually offer a Pirates League where kiddos and adults alike can get pirate makeovers. So we have talked a lot about the prospect of us getting pirate beards. We'll see if it happens during pirate night. Back across on the port side, we do have just some more nice seating areas. Obviously, like I found myself a couple of times just wanting to like sit down for a sec. Plenty of options to do so. And we find ourselves here at the second floor of Buena Vista Theater as well. So if you want to sit on the upper level to watch one of the movies, you certainly can. Those entrances are up here. Now you might also notice these green signs every once in a while. Those are your muster stations. If you've never been on a cruise before, there is a mandatory muster drill on your first day on the ship that tells you where to go in the event of an emergency. This is actually our muster station. Um, but we did have to go and watch a safety video. It's just to make sure that everybody is safe and happy during their cruise and that in the unlikely event of any kind of emergency, everyone feels prepared. I'm currently making my way through the ship corridors in search of a very elusive location that is not for me to see typically. So hopefully I find it. I just made like four right turns, which I believe means I'm walking back the way I came. And I just don't, <laughs> don't know if I'm going the right way. Our first clue, look how dark it got. Our first clue, the Vibe entrance. All right, so up these stairs is Vibe. Now Vibe is gonna be the, this place is so hard to find. How long have you been looking? Yes. Me too. I was like, am I in a crew only area? Okay, we happened to catch the open house for Vibe, the most elusive space on the ship. This is for 14 to 17 year olds. This is gonna be the older teens area. Never in my life have I wished to be 14 or 17 again. <laughs> but at this moment, they're playing Mulan. Also very cool, they've got Guitar Hero, foosball tables. They've got a disco ball. <laughs> all right, now let's talk about decks six through 10. So all of these decks are going to be stateroom only decks, as you can see from bow to stern staterooms. Um, the stateroom categories do vary, but let's take a look at our stateroom. We are on the 10th floor right in here. So let's go check it out. All right, we are in a veranda stateroom, which for us is on deck 10, but there are a couple of different decks. Now to open your stateroom door, you will get your key to the world card right when you arrive at your room for the first time, which is basically like a room key, also your key to the rest of the ship. Or if you have a Magic Band Plus or Disney Band, as they call it, you can use that to get into your room. Um, and I have that, so I'm gonna use that to open the door. And here's our room. And there's Cassie. What are you doing here? I'm I'm showing off the room. Oh, what are you doing? Nice. What what are you watching? Like friends or So generally out of the room, you've got your front door and then two like bathroom spaces. They have separate things. We'll get into it. Your closet on the left 
and then your main room space, which this is a standard veranda room, not a family veranda room. So it can sleep three, two here on the bed, and then that sofa does convert to a bed as well. Some rooms will have um, a bunk bed that will be recessed in the ceiling and can come and can come down, but ours does not. Um, but this is just the general vibe of the room. Let's check out the details. So on your door, you're gonna have a lot of important safety reminders. You've got your assembly station in the unlikely event of an emergency, your smoke detection system, standard Disney door lock, same as uh, Disney hotels here. And then you do get your room occupied quiet requested sign that you can hang on the door at any point. Something interesting about cruise rooms are this little doohickey here, which is your light switch. Um, and for lights to work in the room, you do have to have a card in here. See, they're, they're, some of them turned off and more would turn off. But basically the card is, um, they like encourage you to use your key to the world card to do this. It's mostly to save energy in the rooms. Um, if you ha have like danger of forgetting your key to the world card, you can use a different card of some kind, like your Barnes and Noble gift card from home or the Starbucks gift card that's been empty for eight years in your wallet. You could use that instead. Pretty narrow hallway here as you enter. Something that if you've never cruised before to know is that cruise rooms are economical when it comes to space. They're very small, you're on a ship, so there's a lot of fuel packed into a smaller space. These rooms are on the small side, but I will say that for two adults, we haven't had much issue with there being enough storage, with there being like moving around. We've been here for two nights now, right? Something like that. Yeah, we've been here for two nights now and we haven't had any real space issues. It can just be a lot if you've got like the closets and the bathroom open, but otherwise it's fine. So here we have our closets. This is my closet, which has a pile of clothing as one has on vacation. Um, but the things that you'll find in here, you'll find uh, your laundry bag, which is under my fairy wings, <laughs> um, as well as a little laundry ordering card if you want to use laundry service. It's about $25, um, starts at about $25. Then you've got your in-room safe. It is a little drawer safe. Um, and then you've got some storage space down here as well and plenty of hangers and things like that for you to hang things up. Plus your life jackets. Every room has enough life jackets for the maximum uh, capacity of people in the room. And if there were an emergency, uh, there are instructions of how to put your life jacket on with Mickey. But that's closet number one. They're relatively spacious. For seven nights, I can't imagine needing more room than are in these closets. Then in the other closet, we've got a little upper level with the life jacket here. We've got, this is a child life jacket. And then we've got uh, more hangers as well as some more storage space. Moving on to the side of the closet unit, we have a little bit more storage with these shelves with all of the books that I brought that I haven't even started reading. I actually read a chapter of one. We've got here um, a, like another little cubby space. And then this top space you can see has my various Dasani waters <laughs> and my beer mug, which are not in the room when you arrive. It also has this very cute little ducky that the Rahili family gave us. And if you guys are watching, hi. Your duck is still in our room, but we're going to hide it somewhere for other people to find. Uh, this is like a Disney cruise sort of tradition where you can literally just find these around the ship. We've seen a bunch of them and you're supposed to grab them, take a selfie with them and then keep them or hide them. It's up to you. A couple water glasses here, which they have uh, replenished because we did use a few of them. So they got us fresh ones. Um, and then we've got drawers. They're all about this size. They have all my items, including my <laughs> medicine in them. Um, but they're all about the same size. There's three of them here and almost all of my stuff is in these drawers and that closet. So it's, it's plenty of space. We also have some decorations up in the room with like this Mont Voyage sign and the set sail uh, right behind Cassie. Those are some special pillowcases we got. And these are actually an add-on. So you are able to do add-ons like this if you like, um, but it just adds a little pizzazz to the room. And I haven't once hit my head on that banner. You can do decor, you can do theme decor, like we're on a Holland in the high seas. So they had Halloween decorations as an option. You can arrange for water to be left in your room before you arrive. In bottles, not just like on the floor. Um, no, they bring in like a... It's, an, a, it's an immersive, person. it's like an immersive like um, infinity edge <laughs> situation. <laughs> oh, a fruit basket, wine, things like that. You can see it on your Disney Cruise Line app before you even board. Yeah, so if you want anything special in your room, you can check out the pricing and everything for that. Um, we've got this QR print of the four Disney ships that were around when the fantasy launched. Now, of course, we do have the wish and coming next year, the treasure, but you can see the four that were around. Um, and then, yeah, I guess let's talk bed. So this is a queen size bed in here. It is so comfy. It's, oh, so, gosh, it's so comfy. comfy. We literally, every morning we wake up and we're like, man, we have to get out of this. 
The pillows are so... We'll do bed science. I've done my extended bed science. I can report back and say, this is a good bed. It's like a better bed than Disney World beds. I'm just saying something. Wow. Um, the little side lamps by the bed have these like cute <laughs> um, navigational like globe prints. And then the side of the bed, you've got your light switch for your little light. Ta-da. Um, this little upper level that has a hole for cords to go through if you want to, um, as well as the lower level on this side of the bed, there is an outlet here. Um, and then there is a small drawer, uh, which I'm using to store all my various charging cords. The bed itself, um, is made up with like this nice, like decorative kind of like end piece thing, which every time we come in for the night, there is turn down service. So when our room is turned down, this is always folded into a little animal, which is very cute, very exciting. And there's usually chocolates, <laughs> which is nice. Um, and then over here, same bedside table generally. Um, it's just that the, oh, I have a message. Ooh. <laughs> is that the uh, in-room phone is plugged into the outlet. So there's not really an outlet that's accessible over here unless you unplug the in-room phone, which I don't think you should do because what if you need it? Uh, same <laughs> little drawer situation. And then this is a room divider where like if we didn't want to see Cassie right now, we could just not. Look at that. No Cassie. This is great if you um, are rooming like with a kiddo. It can make it feel like a more divided space where everybody has their own like actual space in the room. We've used this before when we have, this time Cassie and I have just decided to share the bed, but in the past, yeah, in the past, we have done one person in the bed and one person on the couch. And when they do turn down, they always pull this divider out for you. So they like automatically set the room up to be two separate spaces, which is very nice. Then also I did forget the thermostat here, which basically has six settings. Oh, seven settings, I can't count. Or eight settings, really. <laughs> Where you can set it, your room to cool, you can set it to warm. Um, there's kind of a keep it at this temperature situation and then a quick cool if you really need to cool the room down. We actually did use this on the first day because I was cold and I set it to warm and then it got really hot in here. Um, who let me do that? This couch that Cassie's on is a full bed. I am five foot nine ish and I can comfortably lay laid out on this. I think probably if you're around six feet, you're still going to be comfortable. And if you, you need me to lay down on it. I would like you to demonstrate. It can fit at least Plenty one Quincy, which is um, a yeah. very useful tool of measurement. Yes, I'm very, I'm long. She is lengthy. If you are like six feet tall, you'd probably still be comfortable on this. Beyond that, less comfortable. That, while you're here with your length, would you like to touch the ceiling? Yeah. There you go. So we are not going to switch the bed to, or we're not going to switch the couch to a bed because that is typically something the hallway attendants do. Speaking of, when you're on a Disney cruise, you will have a hallway attendant who is in charge of doing your housekeeping during the day, switching your room to turn down in the evening. It has been absolutely amazing. In fact, <laughs> Ahmad is our hallway attendant. Uh, they will introduce themselves to you on the first day. They're incredibly nice. Ahmad, this morning we couldn't get our coffee open from our room service. And so Kathy went out in the hallway in, in her my, pajamas in with her like curler in and was like, Ahmad, can you open our coffee? He did. <laughs> Right up. There is a little light over here, so if you do have somebody sleeping over here and they like want to read with this curtain, like that's they totally can. It's part of Quincy's book club. <laughs> it's part of Quincy's book club. Um, you've also got another print here that has tons of nautical stuff, and the little ropes are in Disney character shape, including Cassie and I's favorite Donald, Donald Duck. We've met him twice already. <laughs> it's and we will be meeting him again. Yeah, the goal is to meet Donald every day. Um, we've also got a little table here, which I think is the perfect size to like save space, but still be like useful and usable. We had a room, we had room service this morning and the tray is pretty big and it was perfectly fine on this little table. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk veranda. So this is the second highest room, ca room category is the veranda rooms. Um, only above this are concierge, uh, which all also have verandas. Other options for room categories include completely interior rooms that do have virtual portholes that show the ocean um, with animated Disney characters. There are inside rooms that do show you, hang on, what are they called? Ocean view. There are ocean view rooms that do have portholes out to the ocean, but no veranda. Our veranda is relatively sizable. We were, are on the side of the ship. There are some larger verandas on the corners of the ship, either end of the ship, you can find a little bit larger space. Um, but those tend to be a little more expensive. But the veranda is pretty sizable. This is actually my favorite place to be on the ship is sitting on our veranda because they are relatively private. They have these privacy dividers and you can just look out at the beautiful ocean view. And the great thing is even when you're in a fully interior stateroom, you have those virtual portholes and you have a beautiful ocean view. That's the beauty of a cruise ship. Curtains wise, we have 
Um, a privacy curtain, which isn't really that important and unless you're in port and right next to another cruise ship, because who's going to see us? No one. The a nice seagull. Nemo. Nemo. Nemo could. Um, and then there's also blackout curtains. Uh, so that you can sleep during the day and you can't here. be stopped. It does get pretty dark. Our last section of the main room space is going to be this sort of like vanity area, which is kind of the catch-all space for the room. Um, this is a little bit larger in the family rooms. It's like a longer little section. There's a little bit more to it. But in this room, I'll show you what it's got. We've got some more shelving here where Cassie has chosen to keep her ears. <laughs> so you've got those little shelf spaces. Um, we have a TV. It's a relatively small TV on the Dream and Fantasy, whereas on the Wish, we had a TV like actually in the wall that was a full Ooh, size. I loved that big. Yeah. Flat screen TV. The, the TVs do have like some channels. It's limited, but there are some cable channels. We've been watching a lot of Mickey cartoons, mm -hmm. which they have kind of playing all the time. And then there's also Disney On Demand where you can watch Disney movies. They have tons of options, as well as a lot of informational channels about the cruise ship. My favorite thing is that the cruise directors do do a morning show. Oh. They're funny. <laughs> they are funny. They've got, like, uh, dad jokes, basically, that they tell during them. And it talks about everything that there is to, like, see and do during the day. Right here, you can actually see that uh, this is, like, the room service breakfast ordering card. So if you want breakfast brought to your room, it's kind of like continental breakfast. So it's not, like, hot stuff. It's mostly, like, pastries and fruit, bagels and things like that. But you can place that order here and then hang it on your door before 3 a.m. And breakfast will arrive. If you want a hot breakfast, that's available at Cabana's, the buffet, which we will check out, as well as you can go get sit down breakfast at um, a certain restaurant every day that your server will let you know about on the actual uh, like top of the desk there's a lot of our stuff that <laughs> will not be in your room cluttering up your desk when you arrive um including our our pile of sweet dreams chocolates chocolate that's hoarding. just <laughs> increasing and, as well some fruit. fruit we're hoarding listen this is the snack section this is the snack section see we got some of this halloween little treats yeah so you can get ahead of time um you've also got sort of most of your outlets here so you've got the heavy duty hair dryer outlets some standard outlets these are more light switches usb ports very helpful and then you've got this drawer, which has a couple of things, like these receipts that are ours. <laughs> but you've also got just like this kind of like informational guide about criminal activity prevention on a ship. So if you <laughs> want to read that, I haven't. But if you wanted to, you could. There's stationery um, as well as envelopes if you want to like write a nice letter to your friend. And there's these super cute little postcards. I love that they do the postcards because in Disney World, your postcards, you can get like a pack for around like $10 or sometimes the individual art ones are like five bucks. So a nice little free postcard. Free postcards. I about that. Um, and there's a bin. Here in this cabinet is where you'll find your little mini fridge. Um, we did do one of the water packs so our water's in here as well as some more fruit that we're hoarding. What if we get hungry, okay? <laughs> Um, but this is going to be enough space, I think. You're probably not going to have many, like, leftovers to keep in your fridge. Um, it's probably mostly going to be beverages, uh, which is, means that's plenty of space. Then we got this chair that has Cassie's laptop in it. But no, look at that. I, we're looking at it. No. We're please. looking at it. I tried to hide it. <laughs> it's my shame chair. <laughs> shame chair. Then we've got three more drawers. These are Cassie's drawers. Um, so she's got all her stuff in here. They're all about that size. I really have my life together. I'm very clean. She actually is. She's been tidying the room every night. I'm still looking there. <laughs> I'm like in bed every night and Cassie's like tidying and I'm like, that's nice. I take care of my little cute. <laughs> <laughs> then we've got our final cabinet, which we are using as the technology cabinet. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> look at there. <laughs> so it's a lot of our filming equipment and things like that that are in this cabinet. But you would probably aren't using it for filming equipment. But yeah, that's the main space in the room. So let's check out those bathrooms because cruise bathrooms... Probably not what you think of when you think of a bathroom. We got two little bathroom spaces here. This is the first one. This is the commode room. You've got some little like m more places to hang things, some shelves in here for you to keep any like toiletries you might need, um, a mirror where you can see me do this. I know. Me too. Um, we've got a sink here with very hot water. <laughs> Um, and there is hand soap in here. You also have a tissue dispenser, which they've been refilling for us, which is very nice. Tons of toilet paper, a toilet brush if you need it. Um, extra toilet paper just in case. There is a little trash bin under the sink, a little towel under here, and there's sharps disposal as well, if that's something that you'll need. Uh, a hand towel here. 
Also, watch your step. The first thing I did when we got in this room was trip coming out of the bathroom. Bathroom number two, <laughs> door number two. <laughs> Behind here, this is the um, main shower room that has our swimsuits hanging up. Um, but you've got your shower here, so there are two clotheslines that you can use, uh, which is great because not a lot of space in the room. You can't like hang anything over the edge of your balcony. Um, the shower, let me show you actually. This is not as tall. So for me, the shower head is just high enough. I'm five nine. Shower head is just high enough for me to be like comfortable in the shower and like still get water on my head. If you're any taller, it's gonna be like a showering like this kind of moment. So it's just something to like keep in mind. Not much you can do to avoid it. Oh, but if you do go to the spa and get that rainforest pass, you can go shower over there. Yeah. You've also got a soap dish here, uh, as well as your shower controls. The shower pressure has been very nice. I'll show it to you. I'm gonna not get my head wet. Pretty aggressive shower pressure, pretty good. There is a bath mat as well for you to put out when you shower. And your bath products are gonna be uh, the Sea Salt Body Wash, Sea Marine Revitalizing Conditioner, and Sea Marine Revitalizing Shampoo. I really like the way these smell. Just like in Disney hotels, they do have this little be a friend to the earth and ocean card that reminds you how to conserve water. Why are you? I'm just admiring <laughs> you. Stop. Hey, this is a very serious ship tour, okay? Um, you've also got this shower curtain that has little nautical Mickey knots on it and this curtain which I, I, I cannot for the life of me understand the purpose of. For now we'll go with aesthetics for the purpose. Uh, you've also got a mirror we can see you do this. Nice lighting in here. I've been doing my makeup in here with no problem. Um, also, there is a makeup mirror. <laughs> oh, wait. I was about to say this isn't as good as other makeup mirrors, but it's actually better because it looks like my head is really giant on my shoulders. You look like George Lopez from, <laughs> from um, what is it? The Shirtway Lava, Lava Girl. We've got some more shelves in here. Uh, with These are our toiletries, but there are some uh, towels and then also body lotion, which I've been making a lot of use of because my hands get dry when I travel. Um, vanity, not a ton of vanity space, but not like no vanity space. So like we haven't really had any issue. How did I leave that much makeup on in my makeup bag this morning? And if you do have this sea salt bath soap, which comes right here, as well as the same sink as the other room. The water also gets hot in here, despite Cassie's trying to lie to you. Oh, well, the shower water gets hot. It's all sure. the same water. Then there's uh, more tissue, a tissue dispenser, another trash can. That's Cassie's toiletry bag. We've got hand towels and then a few more towels down here. So we always had like plenty of towels around the room. What did I forget? Okay. What is that? Oh, and there's a shaving outlet in the ceiling. And a big finale. We've got a full length mirror. I know you were wondering where it was. It's on the back of the bathroom door and you can see me do this. And that is our room. But odds are on your cruise, you will not be spending a lot of time in your room because there's a lot of ship to see. And that's a perfectly fine joke to make because they've been making it this whole time. The whole, every day someone is like, Oh, ship! Like, cast members. For the raffles, if yeah, you don't they're win. They're like, if you don't like... win, yell, oh, ship, because it's a family cruise. Um, but yeah, a lot of ship to see, so we are going to go check it out. Let's go take a look around. Woo! Good morning. It's a new day. It got too dark. Dawn. It's a new day. It's a new cruise. This is the same cruise. Oh. It just got too dark to show the upper deck, so we figured we'd finish up this video today. And you know what? That means I did do bed science again, but that doesn't mean that we can skip out on the, the crux of bed science, the most important part, which is the, the fast bed science. All right, it's time for Bed Science with Quincy yeah, 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 in the yeah. ocean at sea. Oh, oh you hit almost the took the banner out. Oh my gosh, it's so comfy. This is actually top 10 coziest beds in the world. I actually don't disagree with that. Every single morning, Cassie and I have like had like a crisis about getting out of bed. The bed is very comfy. It's on the softer side, the mattress. So if you like a firmer mattress, you might not love this bed as much as we do. Um, but the comforter is like super plush and like cozy. And the pillows, the pillows are very soft as well. So they're still supportive. There's a nice amount of like heft to them, but they are plush and the head sinkage is quality. Um, I love this bed. It's fantastic. Um, it's definitely in, it's in the tier of Disneyland beds or like the Four Seasons bed more than a Disney World bed. And that's to say better. So that's bed science for you. Before we 
move on from the rooms, let's talk a little bit about room categories on the Disney Fantasy. So the cheapest room category is going to be inside staterooms. These rooms are fully inside, meaning they have no exterior walls, meaning no real window. However, these rooms do have a magical porthole that will show you real-time views of what your view would be if you did have a window. But there are Disney characters that hang out in those magical portholes, which is really cute. You've got the ocean view rooms that do have an exterior porthole. You've got the veranda rooms like ours, and then you've got the concierge rooms, which all have verandas, but also have access to some concierge amenities, which we'll talk about in just a little bit. Um, these room categories do increase in price. And unfortunately, this is also where we're gonna talk money because Disney cruises are not cheap. In fact, they're on the expensive end uh, as cruise companies go. Uh, here on the Fantasy, uh, we're just going to look at a couple of the different starting prices for the different cruises because obviously it varies greatly depending on the time of year you go, the number of nights you're going with, and the number of people you have in your stateroom. Four nights on the Disney Fantasy starts at $2,600 for two people or $4,200 for a family of four with two kids. A uh, seven night cruise starts at $3,000 for two people and or $5,100 for a family with two kids. And a 10 night cruise starts at $8,500 for two and $13,700 for a family. Now, of course, those are for the lowest room categories that are available. They're for the cheaper cruises of the year. So the prices only go up from there. It's an incredibly pricey vacation. And, and we will talk a little bit about whether or not that splurge is worth it um, towards the end of the video as we experience the ship. Of course, there's tons of inclusions and everything like that, but there's a lot that's not included. So can it be worth the money? I'll tell you. We are here on deck 11 now, and deck 11's first stop is Who's It's and What's It's. This is a very small merchandise location that basically just has pool gear. Swimsuits, cover-ups, towels, sunscreen flip-up shoes, whatever. Stuff that you might have forgotten on your way up to the pool deck. Though, of course, if you have it in your room, a quick jaunt down to the room is going to save you some money. But if something catches your eye in here, then it could be worth a stop. As you can probably tell, our view is just a little bit different from yesterday. We are in port today. This is St. Martin. Uh, we're on the Dutch side of the island and it's really, really beautiful. We are staying on the ship because we're all about showing you this ship. But of course, port days are one of the best parts of a cruise. A cruise is gonna show you the world uh, from the comfort of the, like basically a floating city. So St. Martin is here today. People are out on their port excursions that are upcharged. People are out hanging out on the beaches or exploring the towns. Um, I am pretty happy to just look at this view. Even though, even the shipping yard is beautiful. Deck 11 is also home to Flo's V8 Cafe. This is your quick stop for food. So if you don't want to go to the buffet, you are just wanting to grab something small and quick, uh, Flo's V8 Cafe is gonna be great for that. You've got Luigi's, which has different pizzas. Um, we've also got Tomater Grill, which is gonna have burgers, chicken tenders, your classics. Um, and then Fillmore's Favorites, which is more like sandwiches, salads. Um, I had a really great harvest salad yesterday because we are on the Halloween on the high seas cruise There are a couple like specialty food items at all the restaurants. She She couldn't help herself. We just ate breakfast. I'm so excited. She loves it so much Now deck 11 is kind of the party deck. It's it's literally the party deck actually. This is where the parties happen um, But this is the main pool deck. So as you can see a lot going on up here It's also the loudest deck by far at all times these enclosed windows really bounce sound around, and typically there is a Disney movie playing on the Funnel Vision screen. So for most times of the day, you can check out a classic Disney movie while you are swimming in the Donald family pool or sitting in one of these pool chairs or over there in the Mickey pool. On the sides of this main deck, we have a couple of beverage stands where you can get your alcoholic drinks. You can purchase any of those alcoholic drinks. They also have your free beverage stands. These are 24 hours, so if you need a soda, a water in the middle of the night, you can come up here and grab it. They have coffee, they have hot tea, all of those included beverages that you can get at the restaurants and, and the buffet, you can find here. There are some cute little like splash zones on the side of the ship. You like really never know where you'll find a pool, honestly. They're everywhere. Uh, the other side of this deck pretty much reflects this side, but the best pool on the main deck is going to be the Mickey pool. This deck is also home to the Mickey slide, which is a cute, uh, kind of more typical water slide. It's open at the top. You slide through Mickey's hand basically and out. It's very, very cute and fun, but uh, I think there's a little bit more of an exciting slide that you might see running around the ship. But that's on an upper deck, so we're going to come back to that one. We've also got Nemo's Reef here, which is gonna be the cutest splash zone on the ship, where you can like splash around with Nemo and friends like Dory, Marlin. This is another of those times that I wish I was a child. And then we've got another Upcharge Sweets offering with Sweet on You. Now this is the sweet shop here on the ship. Everything in here does cost more money. 
Uh, so it's not gonna be inclusive stuff in here. And it's themed to the new Mickey cartoons. You've got Mickey and Minnie having their Sunday. You look out the window and see more of the ship, but in a Toon World. Um, and they have ice cream and gelato here. Uh, all of it looks really amazing. And I've had it before and it tastes very amazing. My favorite thing about the sweet shops is these specialty sundaes. You can get one of Mickey's skirt or Minnie's pants. It's kind of hard to say the gelato and the ice cream is worth it when there is free soft serve on the ship that we will check out very shortly. Um, but it's just, you know, it's a little bit extra. It's a little bit more exciting. So if you do want something like this, uh, the sweet shop is an option on board. And I will say, I've always felt it was worth the money. It's just is it worth it over free soft serve i don't know now this kind of stuff you can get some specialty treats but they're not going to be quite as just like confectionarily fantastic as these that's a weird thing for me to say but you know what i mean um amazing cupcakes they've got lots of halloween cupcakes and a pirate cupcake it is pirate night tonight uh, macarons and cake pops and things so there's plenty of stuff that you can grab if you want something just a little bit more exciting than the free soft serve or the desserts you can find at the restaurants and buffet Sweet on You also has a bunch of pre-packaged like popcorns and candies and things. These are very similar and often the same as what you will find in the Disney theme parks. But this is great if you want something in your room, a little sweet treat, or if you want to bring home like a Disney souvenir for someone. Um, it's just that obviously you can access a lot of sweet stuff around the ship for free. Let's talk cabanas. So this is the buffet location here on the ship. It's where you'll find the breakfast and lunch buffets and tons of options at this buffet. You're gonna see like savory options like pasta dishes and veggies they've got fish there was fried cod that was so delicious the other day um and then they've also got sandwiches salads soups they have jumbo shrimp and crab claws they've got deli meats and the options do change out so you're not looking at the exact same buffet every day there are some staples that you'll find most days like of course the chicken tenders the carved meat stations and things like that but you also might see some different stuff every time you come in. For instance, this was turkey yesterday and today it's chicken. Um, and the carving stations just have leg of lamb instead of a huge cut of beef. Cabanas also has in the back here a full bar and a specialty coffee spot. So if you do want an upcharged beverage while you're eating at Cabanas, you can just stop by here to grab it. Cabanas has tons of seating and uh, there's Cabanas on the other ships as well. It is often my first stop when I set off on a Disney cruise, just because the sail away buffet that takes place right when you get on the cruise is the perfect spot to grab lunch um, while you wait for your room to be ready. It can get really crowded in here during peak meal times, but um, usually the lines aren't too long. And a really hot tip is that the buffet is the same. And there's really like often two to three repeatings, hi, of things on the buffet. So if you do want to get something, and there's a really, really long line. You might want to, you know, scope out the restaurant to see if there's a better place to grab it. Lots of seating in here inside, and there's even an outdoor patio, although it gets windy out here, and you do have those complimentary beverage options in here as well. Our next stop is one of the most exciting areas on the ship. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, Grown-ups watching this, this one's for you. And kids, you're going to want to keep watching because this is the only sight you're going to see of this part of the ship. All right, so here at the forward of the ship um, on many of the upper decks, there's the adults only area. Oh, it's reserved for guests 18 years and older. There's always, there's a new towel animal every time we like have come in here every day. Um, and you've got beautiful views. And this area is gonna have a little bit plusher lounge chairs. It's gonna be a whole lot quieter than the family pool deck. Um, You've also got some beautiful pools. Uh, there is a whirlpool spa that tests right up to the window and you can literally sit in it and look out over the island or the ocean. We'll check out everything over there, but a really exciting spot for us is right here. This is Cove Cafe. Cove Cafe is the adults only coffee shop here on the ship. Um, they are going to have like special little treats that you can grab and then they also have those specialty coffees Now it's the same menu as elsewhere. You're not getting anything particularly special here. The uh, Vibe in here is just spectacular. It's so like jazzy and there's these huge porthole windows that look out on the pool deck um, Very classy just like arrangement of their spirits and things like that So we absolutely love it in here. We've come in here every single day and we will continue to do so um this coffee shop is on the dream as well. Um, but we did get our coffee, so we got the Speculoos Latte, which is one of the fall beverages that's available right now. It's like Speculoos and your milk of choice, your coffee. Um, 
it tastes like those little cookies and it's delicious. Also on deck 11, you will find the adults only census spa and salon. Now, since this spa's entrance is here on deck 11, they have a few treatment rooms on deck 12, but regardless, you enter on deck 11. And then uh, the juice bar is not open for much of the day, but they do have like specialty juices and smoothies and things like that. And they even have a beverage seminar in there where you can like kickstart your day is what it's called and learn about like the different juices and stuff, um, which is very cool. And then they also have um, like massages and facials and all sorts of treatments. Uh, we did come to the raffle on the first day where you can learn a whole lot about what they do offer here at Census Spa. Um, and they do have some deals. Typically, like the earlier you book in their cruise, the more you're able to save. They have a thing called Spa More, Save More. Um, they have a full fitness center. So if you want to work out and there are fitness classes that some of which are complimentary, some of which have a nominal fee. Um, and you can see those in your navigator app and get registered for them. Uh, if you do uh, want to come to senses but maybe don't necessarily want a treatment, you can purchase day passes or cruise passes to their rainforest room. The rainforest room is the main relaxation space here at the spa. The rainforest room has specialty showers that can be tailored like pressure wise. It has um, loungers that you can sit in, a sauna and a dry sauna. Of course, if you're staying in concierge, you do get access to the concierge lounge, um, which is obviously for concierge guests alone but it has amenities like um so a little bit nicer like eats and things like that you have access to the concierge staff um hey do you have concierge ma'am i saw they, they got a little ratatouille book they have a ratatouille book yeah yeah the model of the ship luckily no one's seeing us do this <laughs> <laughs> and there is a private concierge sun deck uh, that's available as well. Up here on uh, deck 12, we also have the Funnel Puddle, which is another really tiny pool right now with the board excursion going on and some of the more exciting pools on the deck. So the main pools are obviously gonna draw the most people, but if you take a look around, you might be able to find some much quieter areas, even when people aren't like off of the ship. Now this deck is also where you can take the stairs up into one of the funnels for the most exciting attraction on the ship, the Aqueduct. The Aqueduct is this huge water slide that goes all the way around the top decks of the ship. Uh, for most of it, it is see-through, so you can look out at the views of the ocean. At one point, you even go out over the side of the ship, over the ocean. It is my favorite water slide in the world. I love the aqueduct. It is absolutely a must-do when you are on the ship. Uh, and it's, the entrance is found right here. Uh, it's pretty easy to find because it's this big ol' aqueduct sign. Just behind the aqueduct is the aqua lab. This is a super fun little play area where it looks like the Donald's nephews have gone a little wild and maybe caused some leaks and things in some of the ship's piping. But it looks like a super fun place to play. Now kind of over here is this secret little sidebar called Waves. Uh, it has not been open for our sailing, but it might be open for yours. So this is where it is if you're looking for it. Right behind the entrance to the aqueduct. But it's up there in that Mickey. We are heading up again to Goofy's Sports Deck. Uh, this is a really fun area that has a lot of really like just great ways to get a little exercise. There's sport courts, like you've got a basketball court here. You can pick up basketballs to play. And my favorite part about it up here is that there is mini golf. There's a putt putt course up here at the very, very top of the ship. Um, and it's themed to Max and Goofy. And it's got this like adorable little like pop of course it's so cute it's actually themed i love playing mini golf in disney world it's one of my favorite things i couldn't find cassie but i found her Yay! perhaps the most unique thing on this deck though is the goofy sports simulator this is an activity that does cost an additional fee uh, but it is a sports simulator that's pretty cool um you have to make reservations to play but it is um just a neat option. How are you, Jack? Well, it looks like a plate I saw in King she, George's She castle. does look like, I told her this morning she looks like a plate. I look like a, a plate? plate? Yeah. Plate. Fine China. Fine China. Yeah. She said, well, I said. <laughs> yeah. Nice she gets it. How are we? Very good, very good. Okay, so deck uh, 11 actually is the last full deck that goes all the way across. Now we get into kind of a weird like bits and bobs situation. So we were actually on deck 13 with Goofy Sports Deck and we come just downstairs to show the final thing on deck 12 before we go up to the last little bits up in the funnel and up high on the very, very top deck. Uh, so we are here in, as you can tell, a very swanky area of the ship. 
Um, this is another adults only area and this is the adults only dining. Up here is where you'll find the two adult only dining concepts. We have Palo, which is an Italian restaurant. Um, all of the menu is inspired by Italy. The restaurant's inspired by Italy. A lot of their ingredients are imported. Um, the restaurant manager is from Italy. This chandelier that you can see right in the entrance is shaped like different uh, pieces of pasta. Um, it's a beautiful restaurant and uh, they serve brunch and dinner. Brunch is only on sea days and it is spectacular. We did have brunch at Palo during our perfect day on the Disney Fantasy, which you can see on the channel now. So go ahead and check that out. If you're curious about that, now it is an upchart. It's $50 for brunch per person, um, but it is all you can eat of really fancy food. So it's delicious. Now before your reservations and then also in the evening, we do have Meridian Lounge. Now Meridian Lounge is going to be an adults only lounge space. It's got like a nautical navigator's vibe in here. The cocktails are gonna be a little more fancy and they do have cigars and they have some of the most expensive liquor on the ship. Um, as well as beautiful ocean views, of course. On either side, there's the Meridian Cigar Lounge where smoking is allowed. Um, so if you wanna enjoy a cigar, you can do so out on the cigar lounge. Uh, with the view of the ocean around you. The other restaurant up here is going to be Remy. This is a classical fine dining experience with French dining. Um, it is a beautiful restaurant inspired by Ratatouille. Um, there are some nods to Remy the Rat in there, but not any that you would ever think like, oh, this kind of cheapens the experience. It's still a beautiful, very fine experience. When we last sailed on the Dream, we did do a tasting at Remy, tried out some of the eats. The menu here is curated by some of the best chefs in the world, specifically Chef Arnaud Lamont, who you can actually see in my tour of the wish because I dined at Enchante. And then um, also Chef Scott Hummel, who is uh, the head chef at Victoria and Albert's, um, also the most awarded, most expensive and finest dining establishment in Disney World at Grand Disney's Grand Floridian Resort and Spa. If you're curious about Enchante, you can check that out in my dining on the wish video. And if you're curious about Victoria and Albert's, you can check that out in our full review of Victoria and Albert's, which is also on the channel. But Remy, um, gonna be a finer dining experience a little less approachable um so if you're not that comfortable with fine dining then this might be a little out of your comfort zone but it's very romantic amazing food um and definitely very elevated all right we've made it to the forward funnel where they're playing an enchanted song so we've made our way to edge now edge is another of the youth clubs this one is for ages 11 to 14 and it is up this kind of secret stairwell but it's not the only thing up here that does mean that uh kids from 11 to 12 have access to the Ocean Ears Club and Lab as well as Edge and kids who are 14 have access to both Edge and Vibe so they can kind of go with the age group. We're going to continue going up because there's a kind of a secret location up at the top here. The other thing up here not super relevant is the radio studio. Now I don't know if like it's ever used for anything guest wise but I assume this is where they film the morning show. Don't you think? We gotta get in. <laughs> We gotta get in there. I think the door is open. All right, you should recognize where we are. We are back on deck 13, and uh, this is where we were at the funnel puddle, and we're s those doors right there are into the concierge uh, area, but we are not actually going in there. Again, we are going up these stairs. So the very top exterior deck has Currents Bar, which is this amazing full bar. Up the very top of the ship, the views are insane of the funnel and just obviously St. Martin right now. And then uh, the Currents Bar, there's a past Currents Bar. We have another section of the adults only area with the comfortable loungers. And then at the very, 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 very front of the ship up here, you'll find a beautiful final adults only pool called Satellite Falls. Satellite Falls is this little circular pool right here. It's really windy, so I'm actually getting wet standing over here. But you'll also find one of my favorite places to sit on the whole ship, adults only, so a little quieter. And it is right up here, literally the very, very edge of the ship. So cool to be able to look out. And we can get a glimpse down actually at the outdoor section of Vibe. And with that, we have seen every single thing on the Disney Fantasy Tour the whole ship. A lot to see, a lot to do every single day. You can fill your entire day with the activities available on the ship. If you like this video, like and subscribe. And now go watch our perfect day on the Disney Fantasy. We'll, we'll see, see you, you there. there. I was just so excited to get it right. <laughs>